Hi, in May last year I posted a project on my blog and YouTube channel on how to make this dust cover for your scan and cut machine and I also posted the end panel pattern on my blog for anybody that wanted to go and download it and follow the video. Once I'd made the actual dust cover that you can see here, I decorated the front of mine with rhinestones which I made using the scan and cut rhinestone kit and I've never actually shown you how I created the rhinestone cut file it for the design that you can see here. So as it's the start of Brother Scan and Cut Rhinestone Week I thought I'd share the process in how I made the rhinestone cutting file. I'm not going to be showing how to cut the rhinestone template in this video because I have got other videos on my channel showing you how to use the rhinestone kit. I'm just going to show you how I created the actual cut file in Scan and Cut Canvas for the rhinestone pattern. I'm going to come to Scan and Cut Canvas and I'm in a new blank project and I'm going to show you two ways. So the first way I'm going to show you how to do is by using the text that's already in Scan and Cut Canvas. So if you click on the text icon and scroll down and choose this text here which is W013 Belgium. I'm just going to select that so I get some random text on my desktop. I'm going to double click at, at the end of this T so I get the flashing cursor and I'm going to use the backspace to get rid of the word text and I'm going to type scan and cut. So capital S small c a n space capital N space capital C and then a small u and a small t. And I'm just going to leave them at the size they are there, the default size that they come onto the mat at. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the back arrow and I'm going to come to the basic shapes and I'm going to get myself a square and I'm just going to put that on the mat for a minute. Now, because I've typed this as text using the text tab here, this is all one word. And on my original dust cover, you can see that the N is angled slightly to the left. So to do that, we have to ungroup or break this apart. So while it's selected, I'm going to right click and you'll see there's no ungroup function. So what we have to do is use divide. I'm going to click divide and that will break up all the individual letters for me and it's the N that we want to rotate but before we rotate it I want to make this square so it fits over the N. Now if you select it you'll see it's about just over one and a half inches high so this square I'm going to select it I'm going to come to the properties box I'm going to make, make sure that the maintain aspect ratio is selected I'm going to tap the box down initially to about two 0.25 <coughs> and I'm going to hover it over and it looks about right so I'm going to position it just over the end until I think it looks okay and then I'm just going to click up here somewhere on a blank space of the mat and just drag down just so I select just those two items and none of the other letters while both of those are selected, I'm going to right click and group. Okay, so now they're a group. I can rotate this now slightly to the left until I feel it looks right. Now, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to come up to the premium tab, which is where you find any kits that you've got activated in your scan and cut canvas. And as you can see, I've got the rhinestone kit and the printable sticker. So I'm going to come to the middle icon, which is the rhinestone wizard, and I'm going to select that. And then you've got various options here of fills. I just want the outside of my letters with rhinestones. So I'm going to make sure that I select the first option here. 
The size that I used for my project was SS10. So if you've got another one as a default when you bring this rhinestone wizard up, just click on the down, downward arrow. And if you want to follow it exactly the same as I'm doing, SS10. And I'm leaving this, the spacing exactly as it is on the default setting, which is 0 0.04. And I'm going to say OK. And there is my scan and cut rhinestone design. Now, while it's all still selected, I'm going to come back to the properties box and I'm just going to fill it with a nice bright pink colour so you can see it. And then there it is. So that is one way to make a rhinestone design using scan and cut canvas and a built-in text letter. Now I'm going to show you how I created mine, which I'm not sure whether you can see here, but these are just single stroke lines. So I'll be honest with you and I'll say that the font that I used here, I cannot remember what font I've used at all. So I've been to Dafont and I've found one that's very similar. Obviously, you can use any other single stroke or handwriting font that you may have on your computer. But I know it would have been a handwriting type font or single stroke font because it's just one set of rhinestone letters. Whereas if you look at this, there's two rows of rhinestones on every letter. I hope that makes sense. So in Dafont, I found a font called Life's a Beach. And in the preview box here, I typed in the word scan and cut, and then it's showing me what it should look like. And it's pretty damn close. So I downloaded that and installed it onto my computer. And then what I'm going to do now is open the Brother Scan and Cut Type Converter. I'm going to type scan and cut exactly as I did in Canvas. So with a capital S, a capital N and a capital C. I'm going to scroll down and find this font that's called Life's a Beach. So Life's a Beach. I'm going to select that. I'm going to make it about 144. It, it's not really vital because we're going to hopefully resize it in a minute. And I'm going to hit save. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Beach and put it on my desktop and hit save. Now I've actually already got it saved. So I'm going to come to the SVG icon, navigate to my desktop, find the file called Beach and open it in Scan and Cut Canvas. And there it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click and group it just to give me an idea of size. And then I'm going to come to the premium box and I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to make sure the maintain aspect ratio is selected and I'm going to take it up on the width to about 10 inches. In fact, I'm going to make it 10 and a half. And then I might even take the height up. So I'm going to untick the aspect ratio and take it up to maybe two inches. Okay, so now I'm going to right click and ungroup it. I'm going to come back to the basic shapes. I'm going to get a square. I'm going to go to the properties box, make sure maintain aspect ratio is ticked and make it 2.25 like I did last time and just see if that sits over. And it does. I could actually make it a little bit bigger. So I might make this one 250 and just see how we're looking. That kind of looks a little bit better. 
So again, I'm just going to left click up here and just select these two and right click and group so that I can rotate and put it into position. Now, when I apply the rhinestone feature, this box that becomes this rhinestone square may be a little bit too close. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select these first four letters and using the arrow on my keyboards, I'm going to scoot that over a little bit and then I'm going to come over here and select these three and using the right arrow, scoot that one over a little bit. I'm going to select everything come to the premium option again, down to the rhinestone wizard, leave everything as it is, SS10 and the spacing and say OK. Now, one thing I've forgotten to do, it's telling me that it can't do this process because there's an open path. So I'm going to say OK. And one thing I've completely forgotten to do, which I've shown you in all of my other videos, is it's because of this letter A here. When you bring a font onto your mat that you've brought in from your computer, the middles of your letters on things like A's and E's tend to be two separate items. So by that I mean if I select the A and right click, you'll see I've got an ungroup option, which means there are two two bits to this letter. So I'm going to select it, right click and ungroup and then you, you'll see that there was two blue bounding boxes. Now if I click in the middle of the A, the big blue bounding box is around the outer section of the A and that means that's the bit that's on top. So what we've got to do is right click and send that to the back and then just click anywhere on your page to deselect and then click again in the middle of the letter A and by doing that you'll now see that the blue bounding box is just on the middle section of the A and that means that's on top. So what we have to do now is just select both those sections and we need to come to edit and subtract. And now that has become one letter the middle section has been punched out of the outer section of the A. As I say, if you watch any of my previous videos, I've, I've explained all this before. And again, now, if while that's selected, if I right click, you'll, you'll see there's no ungroup option. So that means it's one, one piece, if you like, now. So what I'm going to try and do now is select everything and see if we can apply the rhinestone function to all this as it is in one go. So we'll come back to the premium section, we'll come back to the rhinestone wizard and we'll say OK. Now again it's telling me we've got this open path. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select each section individually and apply the rhinestone feature. So I'm going to select the word cut, go to premium, rhinestone, say OK. And that's done that section. I'm going to choose this middle section now, which is a group because we grouped it before so we could rotate it. I'm going to come to the premium, rhinestone, say OK. And that's done that one. And then lastly, I'm just going to choose the word scan. So just those four letters selected. And this time it's done it. One thing you can do once you've applied the rhinestone feature, if you think that some of the rhinestones don't particularly look as though they might be in the right place. So let's just say I'm just going to zoom in on the word scan. OK, and if you have a look here, you can see that this particular rhinestone isn't necessarily in line on this letter C. So when you select the letter C, you'll see that it's all grouped. So if you right click and ungroup it, you'll get the path line back. What you can do now, just click anywhere on your page to deselect the path line and then actually click on the rhinestone and you can move it back into place individually until you get the look that you want. 
okay once you've got your letters at once you've got your rhinestones positioned how you want them to look then select on the black path line of the letter you, I'll just undo so you can see I've got that here now and I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard and then that's brought the letters back into alignment a little bit more or I should say it's brought the holes for the rhinestones back into alignment a little bit more you can see on the S here if I select the S right click and ungroup and then select that rhinestone and just take it up position it where I think it might look better select the black S and delete it so that's something you can also do I'm not going to go through the whole text and do that it's just to show you that you can actually manipulate the stones once you've got them in place so what I'm going to do now I'm going to select everything come to the properties box and again I'm going to choose it with it fill it with a nice bright pink so you can see it on the screen you don't have to do this sometimes it you know if you were cutting this in pink rhinestones sometimes it just helps you to see how it's going to look so when you're working with scan and cut canvas you know if you get these messages that tell you that there's open paths just play around with the software and make it work for you as i say it wouldn't let me put the rhinestone feature on this as a whole but by doing it individual sections it's let me do it so there are your two cut files and you can choose to cut them how you wish or use any other font that you want to use that's on your computer using the scan and cut type converter or use the text that's already in scan and cut canvas for you so I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.